It will be uh, forever seared in my memory, in my mind. I, I remember the moment. Uh, this new pastor was coming into town. We were all living in San Antonio. His name was Mark Sorensen, and he had a wife named Nikki, and they were coming to meet with us at a local uh, burger joint in San Antonio called Big's Burger. I miss that place so much. And I remember telling my wife, no matter what happens, no matter what this guy says, we are not leaving this town. Uh, we had moved to San Antonio, and we as a team had grown together, and a lot of the folks behind me here grew up in San Antonio, lived in San Antonio, went to school in San Antonio, and I wasn't about to leave them, and we weren't about to leave. My parents decided, uh, they had lived in Dallas. My dad had a law firm in Dallas and taught law school at SMU, and they lived in Dallas for 30-something years right there, and they had moved to San Antonio to be close to my wife and I and my sister and our kids and grandkids, and they moved to San Antonio, so I said, we are not. I don't care what he says. I don't care how great this church is. We are staying put. We had lunch. We talked about Harvest. We talked about you guys. We talked, they talked about some sort of new building and just about worship and the atmosphere. And, but then he began to talk about the future, what he really sensed God was doing, what God was building, what he thinks God was calling me to join him in. And I remember leaving that lunch thinking, I don't know what I'm gonna tell my parents. I don't know what I'm gonna tell <laughs> my pastor. Because there's an internal, eternal voice that lives inside of you. It's the Spirit of God. And there are decisions that you make based upon fear, anxiety. There are decisions that you make based upon your desire for the future. But then there are moments when it's so clear to you that's the voice of God that in order for you to say no to it, you recognize that he will, whether you have to be swallowed by a well or whatever, he will make a way for you to move. And this was the internal, internal, eternal Spirit of God saying, Trust me, this is where you need to go. So the next memory I have is telling a pastor who I loved and the pastors who I loved of that church. University was this incredible place for me and, and a place where we really grew as a team and they loved us. And instead of saying, you know, being angry at us as pastors, I didn't tell this at 9.30, but they had a service of prayer and blessing for us. You guys remember that? Where the church joined us for a night and prayed blessing over us and sent us to the woodlands sent us four hours east to the woodlands and said, if this is what God's calling you to do. Next memory I have before then is I sat down with these guys because I said, listen, God's calling me to this place. And we had a night in my living room where I just remember there's so many tears and so many questions because I knew God was calling me. But at the very end, I said, listen, if you feel like you would like to move, I said it out loud, it's silly. If you would like to move with your family to the woodlands to find new homes, new jobs, a new life, then if God speaks that, let me know within two weeks. <laughs> I gave him two weeks, this is a long time. <laughs> within two weeks, uh, to my amazement really, and to the grace of God, they all sat me down and said, we're moving with you. I don't, we don't know what we're gonna do. These guys don't, yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> We, we don't wake up every day and just sing Kumbaya. This isn't their full-time job. This is not what they do. The, the, they uh, serve alongside, and these guys all had to move to the Woodlands area and find jobs and find a new life and find new homes, but they made the way, and it wasn't because they were following me. It was because they were following uh, the Spirit of God. And it's just crazy to look back and think about what God has done in the last three years of being a part of this community and what we've experienced. And then getting to meet and partner with Susan and Robert and their family, um, what a joy it is. I don't think you realize how authentic, humble, real the pastors of this church are, and it's particularly Mark and Susan, a part of the service. So they said, Mark asked me, he said, listen, I'm not gonna be here on this day, and I'd love for you to share awakening worship, a message. I said, that'd be awesome, I'd love to do that. And as I began to pray for our community and pray for this time that I would share, it was so clear to me that the Lord was like, no, this is not gonna be just about you. You need to introduce Harvest to who plays with you, who leads with you, who's serving in this capacity. And uh, so we're gonna spend some time this morning sharing a little bit about our hearts and what we see in the future. Would you pray with me? God, thankful for this community. No joke, it's just amazing to think back and to see, God, the way in which your paths brought us to this place and to this church and to the leadership of this church. And God, what you're stirring up, and we've just spent a sermon series talking about awakening, this sort of thing where we are being awakened to a new reality, to a new understanding, to more of you, God, and we're asking for more of that in regards to worship this morning and in regards to what you're calling us to 
And Lord, I'm so thankful for the team I get to serve alongside of. And I'm thankful for the time this morning that we have to share a little bit about our hearts and a little bit about our story. We pray in Jesus' name, amen, amen. First of all, would you guys welcome them for joining me today? I gotta tell you, and I told him, I'd like you to talk in harvest. They were thrilled. I mean, they were like, yeah, we really wanna do that. No, they weren't. They weren't so thrilled. Um, but I think my heart and my goal is that you would recognize in the midst of their story that not just that God's good, but that we're just normal people. For some reason, I think when you're part of a worship team or your pastor, you're kind of sort of placed on this pedestal that's silly because you talk to our spouses and they'll quickly tell you that we are pretty normal and messed up. And... Uh, and I wanted them to be able to share a little story. So I asked them this morning, say your name, because sometimes you will see them in a grocery store and be like, hey, drummer, you, sir. <laughs> and uh, it's starting to get awkward for us. So we're gonna go ahead and say our names. And then I asked them to share something about themselves that maybe that you just don't, that you wouldn't know about them. So Miss Allison. Um, okay, so my name is Allison, and um, just to tell you a little bit about my family, I've got a husband of 20 years. My uh, husband's name is Barry, um, and then I've got two, we've got two lovely children. Thank y'all, yeah. Wow, encouragement. <laughs> two, two awesome children, uh, Taylor and Lauren, and they're um, pretty active in the youth um, here at Harvest, which has been awesome. Um, I'm gonna take my ears out because yeah, I can't hear anything, and that was weird. Yeah. Um, I was probably speaking really loud too. Okay, so other thing, something that you might not know about me. I'm pretty open and verbal about this, but I will tell you, um, so I've been on a recovery journey for 18 years with um, alcohol addiction. So uh, God has relieved me of that addiction 18 years ago. And because of that, I get to work with um, people that struggle and their family members. Um, it's a difficult thing out there. And I'm getting to uh, realize a dream, a 10 year dream of mine to um, be trained in intervention and be able to do that um, more clear and concise. And I'm really excited about that. So a bit about me. Thanks, Allison. Awesome, I'm RT, uh, I play bass in the back over there. And um, really a, an honor and privilege uh, to be in worship and do life with all of you guys. Um, I have been married for seven plus years. My wife is over here and uh, Lisa. And we somewhat recently brought in a new member of our family. We have a 10 month old, uh, soon to be 11 month old uh, baby boy named Maxwell, who you guys will get to know pretty soon because I think he's gonna be baptized uh, in the next couple weeks here. So hopefully he does something really embarrassing to Mark. Um, I don't know, pulls his ear or something. If he throws up on Mark, oh my gosh. I will buy him whatever he wants for Christmas. It's gonna be great. Um, <laughs> that's incredible. Thank you, Susan, for that. Um, but yeah, during the week, I work uh, part-time up here at the church, um, mainly keeping Mark in line, uh, which should be a full-time job. Yes, thank um, you. And then I also uh, help run our, uh, our residency program. So you guys have seen uh, our Woodlands music residents uh, up here in the summer for 10 weeks. Um, they've led up here in Harvest and different venues around the church. And so mm -hmm. I help uh, lead those guys who wanna become worship leaders and we just try to equip them and, and walk alongside them. That's awesome. Thanks, Sarki. So uh, I'm Kyle Brown and um, I'm, I lived in San Antonio all my life. I was born and raised in San Antonio until three years ago when Mark set us down and um, <laughs> you know, we prayed about it and uh, we're real honored to be a part of this team and this, uh, everything that's happening here at the Harvest community. It's really special. And uh, I'm a real estate guy, so that's something you may not know about me. I uh, uh, was in the real estate business or industry for 20 years and uh, I currently work in the Woodlands for a title company as an escrow officer and we just, we handle the closing side of real estate transactions. And of course, sun, that's Monday through Friday. Of course, Sundays I'm here and uh, what you guys don't know about that is my main job here is I'm Mark Swayze's personal hairstylist. So <laughs> anything looks out of place, just let me know. I'm happy to try to make it happen. Uh, Oh, oh, Kyle, thank you. Uh, I've been with the team for about 12 years now, and uh, you know, it feels like forever. Uh, Thanks. We, 
it's just, it's, it's, it's been so, so nice and so good. A funny story about how we originally got in contact with Mark was uh, I, I was in bands after college, you know, late 90s, 2000, early 2000s. I was in rock, alternative rock bands and, in and around the San Antonio area. And uh, we did, I just decided I couldn't really do it anymore. It was a lot of late nights. We had an infant uh, and uh, we just couldn't, couldn't do it anymore. And that part of my life was kind of ending. So I was thinking guitar was just gonna be a hobby from then on out. And Mark Swayze came and got hired on there at the church we attended, university that he talked about. And uh, he, they had a welcoming party for him and Missy at our friend's house, so we were invited to that. And uh, our mother-in-law, uh, or my mother-in-law, Heidi, uh, she, was, she always wanted to get us more involved in the church. And she was very persistent about it. <laughs> and and uh, so I still remember the car ride to, to that party. And uh, we said, Heidi, you know, whatever you do, don't tell Mark that I play the guitar. Just whatever you do, do not have that conversation with him. And we just want to get to know him, and uh, it's no big deal. And I don't, I don't even know that I want to be asked to play guitar in the church. I don't know that I want to do that. Yeah. And uh, so five minutes into the party, my mother-in-law was talking to Mark in the kitchen. They call me in, hey, Kyle, come here, meet Mark. And Mark said, hey, nice to meet you. Uh, I heard you play the, car, the guitar, that's so awesome. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> so 12 years later, here I am. And like I said, I'm honored and blessed to be a part of this community and everything that's happening here. That's awesome, thanks Kyle. My name is Alina. Uh, so typically you guys have uh, Matt that plays piano, but when he's out, I kind of fill in for him. Um, so Monday through Friday, I'm actually a physician assistant. I practice in gastroenterology. Um, and one thing I guess you guys don't know about me is um, I was actually born in a different country. I was born in Russia. Uh, I told the morning service I was really afraid this whole time that like my Russian accent was gonna come out. But <laughs> um, yeah, so we moved to the US when I was 10 years old. Um, we actually moved based on religious persecutions. Um, my grandfather was in jail for Christianity for about 30 years. And it was because of that reason we were given the privilege of moving to the US. Um, he actually uh, passed away a little bit before we moved to the US, so he never really got to, I guess, reap the blessing you know, of a sacrifice. Um, so I'm just really thankful that I'm here and I'm, you know, I'm reaping the blessing with being with you guys. So yeah, nice to meet you all. Yes. Um, I was, I was going to start uh, speaking in Spanish because that's what I did for the first service and everybody freaked out, but I'm not going to do that <laughs> for this service. Uh, first of all, I just want to thank uh, Mark Swayze, uh, Susan, and, and Mark Sorensen. Can we just give them a hand? Because um, it's incredible that they even would let us be on the stage uh, to even share a little bit of our hearts. So thank them and, and thank you guys for opening your hearts to listening to us. Um, a little bit about me, so uh, dad, my dad is from Mexico, from Monterey, Mexico. Um, mom is from the state, she's from here. And this is my beautiful wife. I know we got some inquiries, Mark got some emails, I think. <laughs> we've, had some, we've had some emails. When Alina first came, we had some people go, wow, she's single. I was like, sorry, she's taken by the drummer. That, <laughs> they've been married for a while. So yes, uh, that's my beautiful wife. Um, and uh, I'm just grateful for this community. I'm grateful for what's happening here. Uh, I remember about a year ago, I, uh, I, I came to the church and I was substituting or helping for the drummer that actually was out for about a month. And they reached out to me and said, hey, we need you to just come in for a month and just fill in for a little bit and then that's it. So I did and I came and I just extremely fell in love with this community and how you guys did things and how loving and how homey it felt and just so encouraging and so positive, uplifting. Uh, out here and back there, it's just an incredible atmosphere. Mm -hmm. I love this church. Uh, so just, uh, you guys did a great job at just me wanting to just want to stay. I'm like, man, what am I going to do? Like, I love this church. So when the time came around, I think the drummer came back. He played for about another month. And I remember I was telling these guys in the first service that uh, I went into my car after I was done playing here for that month. And I just prayed. I said, God, um, I don't want to pray anything against the drummer, but... <laughs> If you would open the door for me to be a part of that church, that'd be really incredible. And sure enough, uh, about a month later, 
uh, Mark and RT say, yeah, man, do you want to be part of the team forever? Because uh, these guys, uh, they run with you forever. It's yeah. not just, hey, let's just be friends for a week or for a season. I love that about you guys and about them. So grateful for that. Thank you guys for that. That's awesome. Thank you. We, uh, we, what's, that's Abraham. That's Abraham down there. Did you, you didn't say your last name? Abraham Guajardo. What's really cool, Abraham, really quickly, because um, I, I, I love this story. Abraham was going to be uh, a part of something different with his life. Share that story, I love that. That's story. right. Uh, I actually was uh, in school uh, for criminal justice and I graduated the police academy. That's one thing that you might not know about me. And uh, I, was, uh, I was denying the fact that God was calling me into full-time ministry in the church. And uh, I always just didn't want anything to do with it. Grandpa was pastor in Mexico. Parents are currently pastors in Houston. Uh, so right after harvest, you always see me run out the door because I go straight to their church, serve there, and then come back for night service. But um, uh, so, yeah, it's, it's something. I'm on a journey right now, even now, just pursuing ministry full time and realizing that God called me to more than just that. And nothing against career-driven people, but uh, specifically uh, uh, criminal justice and police work was definitely not for me. So, uh, yeah, that's just a little bit about me. That's awesome. Thank you. Uh, the, uh, yeah, Abraham. So we, we take the opportunity to lead you guys in worship so seriously. And what we're beginning to do is we're asking God, okay, what does it look like? Like, like what is really our role as a team? And, you know, I used to think, I used to really look up to people like Tomlin and, and other worship leaders and go, you know, they have this ability to lead people into the presence of God. But then you get stuck as musicians into this kind of world of, man, we, we wanna be better as musicians. We want to lead well and things like that. Um, but you have to be so careful because really the invitation is very simple. Psalm 34, chapter eight, I think it'll be behind me, says this clearly, and it is an invitation to the church from God himself. It's an invitation to humanity from God himself, which is come, taste and see that the Lord is good, blessed, happy, joyful is the man who takes refuge in him. That's God's invitation for us. God's invitation is that the people of God would enter into worship and to taste and see that God is good. Our invitation is not so much to play music for you or for you to leave this space going, man, great song selections or man, you guys sounding great today or vocally, blah, blah, blah. Our goal is for you to invite you into the presence of God, go alongside of you into the presence of God and to meet with God. See, I really believe a part of awakening worship is this understanding that I think that we have just touched the very corner of the massive opportunity that worship is for the people of God. I think that music is absolutely a gift. Music has the ability to reach parts of our heart where the spoken word can't. It has this ability to carry alongside of it, not just a message, but an emotion. And it's a beautiful gift to us. And I really think that as the church, we've only touched just a, a little bit of what worship could mean. Because ultimately, worship is about meeting with God. It's about entering into his presence. And I don't know, I grew up in a sort of culture of a church, and Allison may speak to this later. I grew up in a culture of churches. Church is something that you did. It's that hour a week that you come and you go, and you spend most of it thinking, oh, man, I can't wait to get out of here and go eat. Or, you know, for us, sometimes you'll find pastors and worship leaders get frustrated at you. We've spent like an hour and a half in rehearsal. We're like backstage, like praying. We're like having all the, and so we're ready for worship. I know for a lot of you in the room, you just like yell at your kids on the way here. You're like screaming at your teenager, get to rebel base. Your husband won't show up. You're already mad at him. And then you come in here and on the first song, you're like, I'm gonna kill someone, you know? <laughs> and, and, and then the pastors, you know, we spend an hour and a half in prayer. We've been like focused, so we're prepared. And you guys come in here and, and I know life happens outside of there, but I'm like, God, is there, is there more? Is there... Is there a better way for us as the church to prepare ourselves for worship? Is there a way that we could posture ourselves better for worship? And that's a question that um, our team asks constantly. Those that are not on the stage right now, um, we, Abby and Callan, Abby and Callan, Callan was the one that was playing drums with us. I know they watch us on live stream every 
uh, week and have really felt called to go. And I don't know if anybody follows them on Instagram. They have thousands of people now, but they take pictures all over the country for, uh, for photography and for Adidas and all this really cool stuff. And we miss them so much. Stephen Bedingfield and Julie, who are not here, Stephen plays electric over on this side behind it where Abraham is. Uh, he'll be back next week. We miss them uh, so much. Um, Stephen Rector, who runs Sound For Us in Harvest and is the lead sort of guy in here, um, is, is someone that has come along with us on this journey. And he doesn't just run Sound For Us. We really see his role as a worship leader from the board back there and as a humongous part of our team. Matt and Kristen, who you guys remember celebrating uh, their adoption of Gypsy in Costa Rica. What I love about Matt is the length of his hair is about the same length as Alina's. So sometimes you can't really tell which one is them, but Matt, <laughs> she's obviously way prettier. Uh, but Matt, uh, Matt and Kristen are in Costa Rica right now uh, adopting. They're going through a five week period in which they're adopting. And so I texted them this week and said, hey, the band is talking to Harvest about our lives and about our hopes and dreams for the future. And they said, we wanna say hi as well. So you guys watch this. Hola, Iglesia. Good morning, Harvest. We are here um, in Costa Rica, the three of us together. Finally, the minor family is complete. And we're so happy to be together. We're learning some Spanish. She's learning some English. And we're doing great. Yeah, Gypsy said she wanted to introduce herself to you guys. So here we go. Hi, my name is Gypsy. I am from or I am from Costa Rica. Thank you for praying for me and mom and papi. I am happy. We <laughs> be in. Guys, we'll see you guys pretty soon. We love you, and we're just so grateful for y'all. Very good. Bye. Adios. It's awesome. You, uh, I, I lost it at 930. I'm doing a lot better right now because when you journey alongside, when you journey alongside people, and you have seen their heart's desire to be mom and dad and to watch. I mean, think about this. They went to Costa Rica. The whole story is amazing. They're gonna have to tell it one day. They're adopting a 10-year-old girl who speaks Spanish. At the same time, and at the same time, God brought us a new drummer who speaks fluent Spanish. And to see how God interweaves our past constantly with his faithfulness and his love, and that's what, that's what life is about. One of the things we wanted to talk about today is how can we as a community step into more authentic worship? And I want these guys to be able to share a little bit. I'll start with Abraham down here, but just a little bit about their heart. What are simple steps? What do you see amongst the community? How can we sort of, when it comes to worship and especially corporate worship, which is when we gather together, what are some steps maybe that we could take? Yeah, I think um, just kind of piggybacking on something you were saying earlier, and Allison will be able, I think you should share next. It's something that we actually talked about on how it is possible to, uh, to come to church and it become a routine, clock in, clock out, I'm done with Jesus. He stays in the harvest room and I go on with my week, Monday through Saturday. And uh, I think one thing, it's surprising just to hear that, but it does happen, obviously. So I would say uh, just being able to create a lifestyle that uh, it's not just right now, this moment, it's what can I do tomorrow to influence, to give hope to my community, to my space that God's given me at my job. And that's worship. Ultimately, it's just you being obedient, waking up and saying, God, what do you want to do today through me at Whole Foods, at work, wherever I'm at? And um, I'd like Allison to share a little bit about uh, your journey and in, in, in that routine that you went through as well. That's good. So um, I grew up in the church. I grew up in a Methodist church, um, started in Dallas where I was born and then moved to Kerrville, Texas. Um, and there's a, a community there. But, you know, um, it was just that thing. It was, the, it was a cultural thing. And I remember when we were actually in the church in San Antonio, I heard a pastor say, and actually Mark said this, I think last week, if mm. I remember, you cannot ride in on the coattails of your parents' religion. This is, I mean, Christianity is not about, I was born into this. Like it's an actual a decision that you make as an individual that you will walk with Christ. And so I, for me, that's what recovery led to. You know, I was in a place of just like showing up and doing what I was doing, but I was kind of living a double life. I don't know if anybody gets that out there. 
But, um, but I was doing that and I was just showing up because my parents, I mean, I did every Beth Moore Bible study and every you know, Bible study fellowship. I was doing all those things, but I was kind of living this double life. And so recovery got me to this place and um, I remember going and hearing that pastor say that and it changed everything because I was like, wait, what? This isn't about just showing up on Sunday. It's about how you live your life. Yeah. And it's why I do what I do today. You know, my life is not my own. Yeah. I've given it up. I've said, God, doesn't mean that it's easy and it doesn't, certainly doesn't mean that there's no trouble or anything like that. I mean, it's a, you know, we're on a journey. And so um, when that happened, I mean, it just, it changed everything for me. Yeah. So. Yeah. Let me ask, let me ask Allison, we'll get to RT. This is just interesting to me. Allison really is open about her, uh, just her story and it's incredible. It's so fruitful helpful for people. Um, one thing Allison always says to us as a team is there's a stat that there's one in seven people struggle with some sort of addiction. And I know everybody in the room probably in some form has, is connected to someone or someone in your family, a friend of yours that is struggling with addiction. And maybe you're sitting there right now and you're going, oh man, that's me. Like, what would you tell someone who is in the midst of that, who feels like, you know, I, I can't step into more worship because I'm, I'm, I'm a mess up, I'm broken myself. Well, why would God want anything to do with me until I clean myself up? So number one, you're not alone. I need you to hear that. Like you're not alone. If you're out there and you're struggling or you've got a family member that's struggling, you're not alone. Um, I mean, again, it's, it's a journey. I think for me, we come into worship. The songs that we sing, like that one about um, you know, being broken, Guess what, guys? I'm not singing that like as if that was 10 years ago or 20 years ago or whatever. I'm singing that as of right today, now. right now. I'm broken and I'm torn, and I, you know, I need God today, probably more than I yeah. in the beginning. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm very aware of my brokenness and my um, just what that's like. So it's it's about here and now. Um, you know, Mark talked about kind of this pedestal, and I know. Listen, I don't, I don't ever want to be have anyone think that I, you don't, don't have troubles or struggles. Um, that's, that's just not the truth. But if you are out there and you're struggling, just, you got to know that you're not alone, um, and connect with someone. I mean, really, that's the biggest thing is just to connect with someone. It could be me, but I can get you connected to somebody else. There are plenty of people that are in this congregation also. I mean, like you said, one in seven that are struggling, uh, with a specific, you know, um, mental illness, addiction, actually one in seven are struggling with, uh, addiction. And, um, and then there's, you know, more with mental illness and things like that. Those things are not going away. Our world has opened up in a way that um, those struggles will continue and they're, and they're growing. You know, it's yeah. amazing how, um, but just, it, it's just about being connected. You know, we call, uh, Mark also said this, uh, Mark Sorensen said, you know, because our church is so big, we have to find a way to get small, to get small and get connected. Yeah. You know, it's so big, but you'll find, there's a place here for you. Yeah. And um, there's just so many opportunities. So, you know, even just talking to someone this morning, they just didn't know that there were things that existed for people that are struggling, and they're out there. You just have to ask. You just yeah. have to talk to people. Yeah. And, and to be vulnerable, like, you know, to say, hey, I, I still struggle, you know? Yeah, church is in the place for the cleaned up, and I think yeah. you've really taught me that, is that you just come as you are and posture yourself in a place of God. I just, I need you to intervene, and, and we've seen so many miracles, and thanks for that ministry. T, you have some thoughts? I mean, just a, in a practical sense, I mean, this group, when, when we show up on Sundays, it's, we've put in the time and preparation musically uh, to play the songs, but ultimately music is such a small part of this ministry and yeah, this team. And I think that when we get together for rehearsals, you know, we call them rehearsals, but on Thursday nights uh, when we rehearse, we sometimes don't even pick up our instruments. Uh, we don't even play a note. Um, because family is more important, community is more important. Mm -hmm. And so when we get together Thursdays and we just pour into each other and pray for each other and go through adoptions together and struggles together, um, I think that that trans sometimes translates more on a Sunday morning when we're able to worship God freely is because we've, we've gone through it together. And so I think that, that's one thing that Harvest has taught us too is yeah. just how important community is and you know, we see these small groups and these Bible studies that everyone is going through and it's just so crazy important to share your life with people around you and, and pour into each other. Um, yeah. I love that. You know, KB, you want anything? Let's share. Uh, yeah, I'll just say that I'm encouraged by you, Harvest. Um, 
just the three years, three and a half years or however long we've been here, you know, we, when we first came, we were in the sanctuary. We weren't even in this space yet. And the growth I've seen in all of you is really incredible. And I'm not just talking about numbers, just the, uh, the steps you're taking in worship. Um, I, I just feel like uh, the community is coming together like, like nothing I've ever seen. The small groups I hear about, the, all of the things that Dr. Rob shared that happened with Harvey and how this church uh, came together and made a stand and really uh, did a lot to help with that. Um, it's, it's really an incredible thing to be a part of and uh, just be encouraged because we have a different perspective here in worship uh, being on stage, but uh, you know, I, I, I see it in all of you. It's really an awesome thing. You know, the one thing we would just say is that, yeah, I mean, we lead and I think sometimes you think we can't see you, we watch you. Um, and there are different days and different expectations. There are days, uh, I remember Abraham said, you know, on the, when we celebrated the 20 years and we came together and worship, the place just was, had a faith that was rising and people were expecting and ready to go. And I, I would encourage you, I would encourage you in that is to begin to ask yourself, God, am I in the midst of worship and in the word of God when we sit and listen to teaching? Am, am I going through some sort of motion? Am I singing a song because it's on the screen? Am I waiting for my favorite moment or waiting for some sort of feeling? Or am I coming in, positioning myself to meet with you, to actually meet with you? Tonight, we're not doing this. We are gonna have a night of worship at 5.30 where we just spend time before the Lord, sing some new songs and pray together. We wanna invite you to come back to be a part of that uh, tonight. But I really think that, to back to my first lunch with Sorensen, I really think that God is only beginning something here. And all I'm asking you is, be a part of this. Stay and be a part of this. This may be your 20th year to be a part of the service or this may be your first Sunday you've ever showed up in the room. Come and be a part of this. Come every week expectant. We're doing everything we can to not go through the motions but to say God is doing something new every Sunday. Even though it feels like it's the same thing, the same structure, we are saying God do something new every week. Take us into something deeper. Let us see something greater. Let me pray. Lord, thanks for this time that we've had this morning and this opportunity for us as a team to share our hearts in regards to what you're doing. We look at the awakening and we look at the revival, God, of what you're stirring. And I really believe in many ways this church is called to be a light and a role model for United Methodist churches across this country. And that will only continue. But I believe that the Spirit of God is here. In fact, the beauty of the Spirit of God is not that he is dwelling above us or around us. Scripture says that he is inside of us, that it is Christ in you, the hope of glory, and that Christ, the Spirit of God, lives on the inside of us. The very moment we say, Jesus, I need you. Someone may say that this morning, Jesus, I need you. I need you to come into my heart, into my heart chest, that my body might be a temple of the Holy Spirit, that at the altar of Christ and the cross of Christ, I have been redeemed. I have been invited by the Savior of the world to taste and see that God is a good, faithful, loving, redemptive God. So I pray for my family this morning, this church, and I pray that we would just begin to see more and more glimpses of what it looks like when the church is authentic, real, passionate, and we pursue you in the midst of our gatherings together. We ask this in Jesus' name, amen.